Hey, what's up guys? Trevor with Shadow Systems, Technical Tuesday. We're at the board and we're gonna do some nerdy primer stuff today. Uh, before I start, I, I, I can see that my uh, road rash is visible here. Um, I was out for a run this morning and then I just ate it and made kind of like a, oh, ow, it hurts so bad kind of noise and then collected myself and, and came home. I also smashed my phone in the process, which was cool. Um, but I'm here and we're gonna talk about primers. Okay. Um, what's prompting this? Well, we've had a few reports recently of some light strikes, which has never really happened before. Uh, and we've kind of determined that there's some new ammunition on the market that has some super hard primers. Um, and we want to talk about just priming, you know, primers in general, how to read primers. You know, you can learn certain things about what's happening inside the gun mechanically and ballistically on the internal ballistic side. You can learn by looking at your primers a lot of that stuff. So I want to talk about primers so that you can read them a little better and know what to look for. Okay, so first, you know, let's just describe primers in general. Um, you kind of have two scenarios. There's the, the European, maybe more Soviet bloc uh, kind of uh, uh, burden primed, and then there's the boxer primed uh, variety that you see more in the United States and probably across most Western nations now. Um, what does that actually mean? I'm going to draw the, the casings from the side. So here's the primer pocket, right? Okay, so you got a, you know, there's the rim of the round, here's the primer pocket. On a, on a boxer primed round like we have, there's a hole right there, okay? and the priming compound is getting crushed against what's called an anvil that's inside the primer, part of the primer. This is considered to be reloadable ammunition. You knock the primer out, you put a new one in, right? A burden primed cartridge actually has a post right there. And then there's a little hole on either side, okay? So the priming compound is getting smashed against a, an anvil that's integral to the casing, okay? And then the flash holes are usually on either side. There's usually two of them. And you see that again more with kind of the European stuff. Um, candidly, for this ammunition I mentioned earlier, I don't know if it's burden primed or not. It might be. But um, this is kind of how casings are constructed, either bo boxer or, or, or burden primed. Okay. We're going to talk about boxer. So domestic U.S., Western nation, modern, high-quality ammunition, boxer primed. How is the primer actually constructed? Well, uh, I'm going to draw it kind of from the top down and then from the side. So from the top down, you have um, inside the casing, you have something that's called the anvil I mentioned a moment ago. And it, it looks like this kind of three-cornered sort of thing that's raised in the middle. And it provides the actual striking surface for the firing pin to crush the priming compound. Okay? Viewed from the side, it kind of would look sort of more like that inside the casing right something like that and then the priming cup is over that so what you see is the back of the priming cup and the firing pin strikes right there so you can see the priming compound is getting crushed against this you know internal little anvil inside there okay so that's how the, that's how primers are constructed um, now why is that important well you know you can start to to understand sort of the mechanics behind you know cases where the round doesn't ignite um, one would be the off-center strike, which we'll talk about in a minute, and I think is actually one of the more common failures that people identify as a, as a, as a light strike. It's actually off-center. Um, and then the other thing is you can see that if this cup is really thick, right, that firing pin's got to have more energy to deform it enough to compress the priming compound and fire the round. And that's probably what's at work with this ammunition that I mentioned earlier and some of the other stuff that's out there because um, most ammunition that is kind of surplus, that's nine millimeter caliber, it's even true of NATO MO, um, uh, you know, anything that's, that's designed for use in submachine guns, really, you'll see that they, they have a thicker primer cup. Fully automatic weapons benefit usually from a thicker primer cup. Uh, and the reason is it limits the potential for slam fires where on a closed bolt system, as the bolt is closing, you know, the breech face gives it so much shock that it actually fires the gun without you know, the operator pulling the trigger. So that's why you'll see thicker primer cups on some stuff. It's, it's to function better in fully automatic weapons. And 
that's why sometimes you know surplus ammunition is not as ignition reliable in, in, in certain pistols. It's just because it's got that really thick primer cup. Now, let's talk a little bit about our primer uh, or our firing pin tip and design, uh, which we really did design to provide optimal ignition. So again, going back to the kind of two scenarios where this doesn't ignite, off center strike or you know, insufficient deformation of the cup, we wanted to optimize for both, okay? And there's kind of a threshold amount of deformation, meaning like depth of strike that you need to initiate, to initiate a, 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 the, the round. Um, I think there's actually a European standard on this uh, and it's like 0.3 millimeters in Europe. They do a lot of that kind of testing there. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like it needs to get deep enough, you know, on your average primer cup to light the round off. Um, and then the other thing, like I said, is you want it to be centered up. You know, you, you, want it, you want to cover, you want to get coverage as close to the middle of the primer as possible, right? So when we designed our firing pin tip, we actually went for a slightly more blunt tip, okay? Because my th thought process was basically, once I've achieved that threshold level of deformation, or maybe a little more than that, right? And then what I really want is a broad strike. So if you look at rounds fired through like a DR920 or MR920 with a round firing pin, you'll notice, man, that thing is getting its ass kicked. Like the, the strike is very broad and very deep. And we designed our tip and went a lot of different ways to get to that place, okay? So um, I only mention that because, you know, the guns are optimized to be ignition reliable with as, you know, all the ammunition we've ever tested, which by the way is, you know, we've definitely done some European stuff. We've tried Wolf and things like that. We've done uh, a lot of testing with Fiocchi and Federal and Winchester and Remington, and uh, we've done Buffalo Bore and you know some off brands. I mean, we've shot a lot of ammunition, and light strikes are just never a problem for us. In fact, we see more just like really heavy, nasty strikes. Um, so that's the deal on you know the primer cup and the firing pin tip geometry and why it is the way it is. So let's talk about failures to ignite, okay? This is the, the light strike conversation. All right, so as I said earlier, there's you know, at least one obvious reason why, why the round doesn't ignite, and that is that it gets a little tiny hit, it's a small strike in the middle, and it doesn't deform the cup enough to initiate the propellant. All right, um, this scenario is usually from one of two things. It is either a, uh, a striker spring has been replaced. We see it all the time. Somebody will complain about light strikes, gun comes back, it's got a lightweight striker spring in it. That's a, that's a component that people replace very often to reduce their trigger pull. It's an like, inexpensive way to take a pound off your trigger pull. And it might work great with some ammunition, but you are starting to push the envelope on you know, how broad uh, you know, a spectrum of ammunition is gonna ignite reliably. When, when, you when you lessen the weight of the striker spring. So the first reason we see this, hey, guy swapped the striker spring out and now the gun's not lighting everything off. Um, you know, the, the other reason we see this is if um, you've got that really hard primer cup, okay? And again, the first time this has ever popped up is with this Turkish ammunition. Um, we've never had it before, but that seems to be, you know, the threshold where people will start to get some light strikes, okay? So, if you see a centered strike, relatively centered strike, and it's light, striker spring, or really hard primer cup. Okay, now, this is not the most common defect. The most common defect that we see is actually the off-center strike, okay? So, an off-center strike is just what it sounds like, but it's normally also light. And the reason is, what usually this means is that for, for whatever reason, and we'll talk about possibilities, the round hasn't fully seated into the chamber, okay? The breech is closed enough to fire the gun, but it's not actually closed all the way, okay? Every gun has some little tiny, tiny section where, you know, where the, where the, uh, the gun can fire. And it, there's a, it's a continuum. It's like, there's probably like a 10,000th range or something where, you know, the gun, the gun is gonna fire even if the breech isn't like truly all the way seated. 
Well, when that's the case, if, if, the, if the gun is a tiny bit out of battery, that also means the barrel has moved down a little bit, right? Because as soon as the slide moves, the barrel is starting to creep down. And what that means is the casing has moved down in the chamber relative to the location of the, or the chamber has moved down in the gun relative to the location of the firing pin and then you get a high strike, okay? Um, and they're usually also light because if the gun is a little tiny bit out of battery, then the round is not fully seated and held firmly and it can wiggle a little bit, okay? Or, you know, it's, it's mostly being held by the extractor hook instead of fully seated at that point. All right, so what can cause that? Well, one is the ammunition's out of spec, the casing is bulged, it's created a lot of drag going into the chamber, the round is a little bit too long, so it's contacting the lead of the rifling and it's not permitting the breech to close all the way, uh, gun is super dirty, recoil spring is super worn. Okay, those are kind of common causes for this, all right? Um, I would say that obviously a tighter gun is gonna be a little more prone to some of that. So I would just, again, caution, hey, break your gun in, we fit things a little tighter, you might need a couple mags before the gun's off to the races, okay? But a fully dialed, or a fully broke in Shadow Systems gun is gonna have just the right amount of play where you're gonna get that breach to close perfectly every time. That is the most common defect that we see, okay? Um, and by the way, it's actually more common on guns that have been shot a lot. It just seems like, you know, somebody will switch to a new brand of ammunition or they're using some remanufactured stuff and the breech isn't quite closing all the way. Okay. All right. So now we've talked about light strikes and we've talked about off center strikes. All right. The last topic is going to be, um, uh, reading the primer. Okay. Primer defect. I'll call it defect. It's really just information. Okay. So the first one is the pierced primer. All right, so pierce primer is exactly what it sounds like. The back of the, of the primer has like some charring around it, and it's because the firing pin tip has gone straight through the primer, and some of that propellant gas and stuff has come back and, and uh, come out of the primer. Um, what are the causes? Well, in a, if you're talking about a rifle, uh, you know, blown primers a lot of times are associated with very high pressure. Um, in a handgun, more often than not, if you see a pierce primer, it's probably a defect with the firing pin tip where it's got a burr or it's too sharp, or it might just be a defective primer. Okay, that does happen sometimes. I've seen very few of these, okay, ever. But a pierce primer, I've seen them in rifles, but I've not seen them very much in, in pistols. Okay, so that pierce primer, if it's a handgun, I wouldn't worry about it. Maybe inspect your firing pin tip. If it's fine, it's fine. Okay, two, primer flow. Okay, primer flow is more common, okay? And it can actually lead to a misdiagnosis uh, and, have, and cause you to think you're getting a light strike, even though the round's going off. Okay. What does primer flow mean? Well, let me try to draw this. So that's the hole in the breech face, and the casing is sitting sort of right here, right? And the firing pin is coming through right here and striking the uh, primer. Well, uh, what can happen is this primer cup flows back into flows back into the opening in the breech face and kind of surrounds the firing pin tip just a little tiny bit. Okay, and if if you've got this in a gun that's not a semi-automatic, you'll actually see. A, like a crater. It's like a really cool looking little funny crater. Um, if I could draw it, it's sort of like the primer, the primer looks sort of like this, okay? Where the firing pin tip has hit it, okay? Um, if it, again, if it's a rifle, that might be indicative of high pressure. If it's a handgun, probably not, okay? It's probably just tolerance with the firing pin tip. It's very common um, and it's not something to worry about. The, the place where you get, you know, I mean, let me say it anyway. It's something to worry about if it's like causing primers to rupture or fall out or, you know, you're damaging the gun or something. Okay, yeah, that, that's an issue. But, you know, in general, you'll see this all the time on all kinds of guns, okay? The place where it causes people some confusion is in a semi-automatic gun, as the breech is opening, oftentimes this gets sheared off. 
that little bit of that flowed is sheared off. So rather than seeing the great big you know, strike you're used to seeing in the middle of the primer, what you actually see is a little kind of tiny divot. Okay, see what happened? When that sheared off, you're gonna end up with a tiny divot with kind of like some drag marks around it. But if you don't look closely, you might not see the drag. Okay, well what's actually happened is that this thing got a massive strike and the primer flowed a little bit and the breach opened and it sheared off that crater thing, the volcano looking thing, and left you with, you know, this, what looks at a glance to be a small strike, but is actually a, a primer flow and it's, an, it's, a, it's a big hit. So we've had cases where people will say, hey, you know, I mean, I'm, I think I'm getting light strikes. The strikes look very light on the backs of my casings. And, um, you know, we say, are they going off? And it's, yeah, it goes off every time. It's great. But I just, I, I, the casings look a little weird to me. Well, that's what's actually happening. Okay, that, that's what's actually happening is it's getting a, a, a massive strike, but maybe it's high pressure ammo, maybe it's a thin primer cup, maybe whatever, you're getting a little bit of primer flow and shear. Okay. All right. Um, so that's primer flow. So if you see, if you see a light strike, or you think it's a light strike, especially if it's a nice centered strike and the round's going off, hey, look a little closer and see if you see kind of a little donut of, of uh, shear where that primer flow was cut off by the breech face. All right, last one is flat primer, or flattened primers, okay. Um, this is a very traditional sign people use for high pressure. This is sort of like, you know, this, the, the last warning you're gonna get before something happens. I'd say it's mostly, a, again, a kind of a rifle thing, and I've also learned over the years that many standard pressure loadings can cause flattened primers, especially in high pressure cartridges, uh, which the nine millimeter is a pretty high pressure cartridge, um, but you know, for whatever reason, you don't see it very much. Um, when you see it, it's it's exactly what it sounds like. So you know, going back to the the uh, hole in the casing, the primer's sitting right here, right? Well, if you get primer flow, I mean, it just it just basically flow or not flow. Sorry, flat primers. It just like flattens, completely flattens into that space. And it's like dead flat across the top. And you can usually see the machine lines of the breech face on the primer where the primer just got totally flattened by the breech face because of the pressure. I don't think it's something you need to worry about unless you're hand loading probably. I mean, you can read your primers and watch for signs of pressure. And you know, as they get flatter, go, okay, well, I'm getting there. Um, but I just only mention this because it is part of the priming conversation. Uh, it is another defect to look for. So, all right, we're gonna roll some pictures in, if, if, you know, so you guys should have seen all this by now. Um, but if you have questions, as always, we're here. Give us a shout and we would love to talk to you about this and anything else to do with your Shadow Systems gun. Thank you, bye.